Good morning. Praise God. Wonderful, beautiful people of God. As he says, better late than never. Hallelujah. So we're not late. We're in God's timing. And this beautiful morning is the day of the Lord. And so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Isn't that profound? The day, anytime you wake up, it is elastic. It is an opportunity for us to rejoice and be glad in that day. Why? Because God has so much for us in the day. The fact that we are alive is enough for us to know that God is good. Hallelujah. This is a final series on rejoicing. And so even our introduction tells us, encourages us to rejoice because God has given us a new day. The expectations in the day is enough. The plans that God has in the day is enough for us to rejoice. Let me tell you a secret. Maybe some of you know it and others don't know it. But in the New Testament alone, the word rejoice was repeated 220 times. Rejoice, that word, rejoice, 220 times. If God didn't see the value of this word, he wouldn't have emphasized it, he retreated on it over and over throughout from Jesus, through the Gospels, right from Matthew to, uh, to um, Revelation. God emphasized that we will rejoice. And he didn't just leave us there. He showed us how. So today we're going to look at cultivating the spirit of rejoicing. To cultivate it's, a, it's an agricultural word. It means to grow. It means to make things, to plant a seed, water it, um, and what do you call it, uh, prune it, and make it happen. So we're going to see how God wants us to make the spirit of rejoicing happen. And in the New Testament, it was written, it was repeated 146 times. So when you put the whole Bible together, it 346 times? This is marvelous. It means that in every day, there was a command for you and I to rejoice, regardless. Regardless of what we see, regardless of what the enemy is doing around us, God says we should rejoice. And he didn't say it because we are mad people. And how can you rejoice when so much is happening around you? No. He's given us the dose, the dosage, the medication that which will take us from where we are into receiving the best he has for us. Because in, in, in ingratitude, you can, a man can receive nothing from God in ingratitude. It is when we rejoice that we draw from the wells of salvation as we heard last week. So today we're going to look at how to cultivate the spirit of joy. Oh, <laughs> beautiful and awesome. Come with me. It's going to be brief and beautiful. Hallelujah. The first thing that we're going to learn today, as we read Philippians chapter 4, verse 47, you need a very, very famous, famous scripture. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That rejoice, is that word is a verb, but it's a commanding verb. Rejoice. It means that, Nobody will say to you, rejoice if you're already happy and we're celebrating and happy and, and you're full of life. It is, some, it is when you sit miserable that somebody tells you, rejoice. It means God is telling us that the misery is not going to wash. The command is rise up and rejoice. Hallelujah. And he said to us, let your gentleness be known unto all. Let your supplication, let your needs be known. Don't sit down and, oh, 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 oh me, pass for me. It's only me. No, it's not just you. Tell others about how you feel so that they, they can join with you and pray for you. And he says, the Lord is at hand. One of my favorite phrases in the scripture, in the Bible, is, the Lord is at hand. You look at your hand. Just look at your hand. And this is how close the Lord is with you and for you. 
You have hands. Look at him. Raise it up. The Lord is at hand. He is present. That is why you and I can rejoice. And then this is where it gets so interesting. So listen, it says, be anxious for nothing. Anxiety is a killer. He has taken the lives of many precious people, especially our young people. In the season that we find mental health has heightened. The time's over. Especially from during, during the pandemic and afterwards, the enemy hit the minds of our young ones with anxiety. But listen, this is the antidote to overcome all the wiles of the evil one. And that is one word, rejoice. And listen to how you can get it. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, what? By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. So you see, God gave the solution right there. Prayer. Prayer. Thanksgiving and the peace of God. The word of God brings us peace. So listen, we're going to go through every step of it. God says, pray in everything what? With prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. That is the word of God to us. And Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, man, Always ought to pray and not to lose heart, faint. Listen, the opposite of prayerlessness is hopelessness. And when you feel hopeless, you can't rejoice. So God knowing that humanity will come, we will all come to a place of hopelessness when situations are overwhelming. He says, rejoice. Pray, 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 pray. He says, pray, man, always. Always means always. I didn't write, I I didn't do that. I didn't write English language, but I know that that I have a little little understanding in that language. And it says, pray, always. Always is always. Every given time, every situation, you are eating, you are bathing, you are, you are walking up and down, you are praying. Always ought to pray because there is a tendency for faint. There is a tendency for losing heart. The solution is prayer. When the enemy hits hard, when the enemy comes hard against you, that is when you pray the more because that is your dosage. And that is how you penetrate into the well of joy. Prayer takes you there. Prayer takes you into that. Because immediately you begin to pray, the weight of that issue begins to shift. Because then you've just done what? Cast that burden, that problem, that child's issues, that marital issues, that um, um, financial issue, that jobless, jobless issue. Any situation that the enemy is confronting you with, the solution It's rejoicing and cultivating this joy is in prayer. Hallelujah. The first thing, pray, pray, and pray. Listen, you're not crazy when you pray. Because when you pray, you are saying to God, I cannot do this on my own. So I I rely on you. Prayer is is just just simply relying on the ability of God to change the situation. When you pray, that is what you are telling God. I can't handle it. I cast it. I throw it to you. I throw it. Because I know you care. That is what prayer is saying. So those who pray more are saying to God, Lord, the situation is bad. And so I will pray more. I will cast it more. I rely on you more. I trust in you more. Prayer does that. It shows God that your ultimate reliance on him and his ability to change that situation. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I can feel the presence of God as I encourage somebody. Because I know somebody is in a place where the enemy is saying, this is hopeless. Oh, this is too bad. This is, this, nothing can be done. God says, pray, pray, 
pray. Don't be anxious. Just pray. Just pray. So that you don't faint. And one of the solutions that the psalmist, the sweet psalmist, oh, a wonderful psalmist says to us, one of the ways that we can also cultivate, cultivate the spirit of joy is the word of God. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119 verse 105. We know this. We sang it. But you see, what the word of God does in a, in a negative situation is that it gives you direction and instruction. It, it opens up the agenda of God for you. That is why this, this is it's a light unto my feet. So when you put a light to your feet, it knows where you are stepping. You are walking circumspectly, not as a fool, but somebody who knows where to plant your feet. That is it. And the light to your path, it means your path is, is shining. The, the word of God brings illumination to your path. The decision you have to make and the way you have to take. Hey, that's the word. The word. So when you are in crisis, you bury your head, your beautiful, amazing head into the scripture. You find it. What, what has God said about my situation in scripture? Which, uh, you know, you're using your concordances. You're using every engine, every instrument that you have. Look for what is directly relating to that situation and latch on it. Latch on it. Hold it, Radhi. God, this is your word. This is your ultimate. And your word, where the word of the king is, the Bible says there is dynamis, there is power. Power explodes out of the word of God because the word of God is God himself. And so when you begin to speak the word, when you begin to say back his word to him, he watches over that word to perform it. Hallelujah. Just feel it. I feel. I feel God. I feel God. I feel God. I feel God in this room. I feel God. I feel God. Hallelujah. I feel God. I feel God. I feel God. Thank you, Jesus. And the and the final thing that 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 scripture tells us is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. <laughs> You know, so it's like, that you, how can you, how can I thank God when everybody, anything, anything seems so bad? Oh, yes. You think you're the only one that has experienced that, the worst kind of what you think the enemy is saying is, it has nothing, it has never happened to anybody. It has. There was a man in scripture, maybe, <laughs> maybe we can say that apart from, well, I ask for Christ. He laid down his life. When it, when it comes to destruction, maybe the only one who will even try and come close is Paul. But this man was called Job. How many people? How many people have named their children Job? Because you and I know that. <laughs> Say calling the child no Job means that you are bringing trouble. Listen, there is no greater man. Of faith, I I want to believe that there's no greater man of faith than Job, because that man in a day, in a day, in few minutes, apart from each other, seconds after second, first the enemy took every what the Bible says he was wealthy, he had thousands of camels, sheep, cattle, God, he had everything, and in one day a wind came. They said fire from God. No, it was from the devil came and destroyed all that he had, thousands and thousands. And then whilst one man escapes death, his household were destroyed. Listen, all his men, if you had thousand camels, you will have maybe thousand people or 500 people watching it. And you have thousands and tens of thousands of sheep and goat and all that. You will have 500 or thousand more. Everybody was slaughtered. The enemy left one. One, one, and those ones were the ones to bring the report to Job as to what has happened to his assets and all the men that are in his household. And then when the enemy finished, he killed all his ten children. He didn't spare one. Killed them, slaughtered. 
you so you, you you're looking at this and you think that you, you can match job's predicament that man lost 10 children in a day lost everything in the day and he had to contend with his spouse the bible says immediately job had this in job 1 20 to 21 the bible says job Arose. He arose and he rent his mantle, shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Hey, Masata. He worshipped. He worshipped. He didn't say a word. He didn't say anything. Oh, oh God. <laughs> He, lay, he shaved his head. He took off his clothes. He had a good shower. And he went before God and he fell flat on his face. And he worshipped the king of glory. His creator. The one who gave him everything he had. And that is why he said, hey, I came out from my mother's womb naked. <laughs> that is why he took off his mantle. It was the first thing he took off. Because he acknowledged that when he was born, he was born naked. So that cloth on his back was given to him by God. He took it off. Shaved everything. Because he came out bald like we all do. And fell before his creator. And said, I came with nothing. And I'll take nothing with me. Hallelujah. What a great faith. What an ultimate, powerful, and a selfless man. <laughs> Is it, it, uh, do, am I saying it's easy? How? No, no, no. Don't, don't misquote me. I didn't say it was easy. I'm saying that the job gave us an example so that we can all emulate when crisis hits us. <clears throat> and what we say is that what? He said, no, nothing evil came out of his lips. He will not sin against God with his lips. <laughs> Oh, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Bring us to a place where when, when it, it gets so bad, we will not sin against you with our mouth. <laughs> Set a guard on our mouth that we will not sin against you, but we will trust you completely. Just as Job did. And the Bible says that he didn't just, he wasn't just contending with the losses. His body. His body covered in boils and worms. He found himself on, on a, a, a dust heap, scrap, scratching himself with potter's uh, 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 broken uh, 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 mark. <laughs> scratching because worms were eating him. Ah, Jesus. He did not sin against God with his spirit. His wife comes and says, oh my goodness, how does you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. Job still retained his integrity. A man of great faith and integrity. He worshipped. When Jehoshaphat was confronted with armies, they're coming from anywhere. Judah, the smallest nation. Two, two nations, two tribes. And nations had come together to fight. What did he do? He rent his scrolls, went before God. God said, hey, this battle is not yours. It's not mine. And how were they able to fight it? How were they able to win the victory? After they prayed and God said, my young did be a sucker. He inquired of the Lord. God said, listen, in this battle, I want you to worship. I want you to worship. I want you to worship. The Bible says when he worshipped, one angel came and sorted out all those things. Everybody died. All they did was worship. I'm encouraging you. Rejoice. That is a secret. Pray. Study the word. And worship. That is how to cultivate the spirit of joy. Love you guys. Stay blessed. Keep worshiping. 
And let the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen.